Good morning guys. I say good morning because it's 6.30 in the morning. It's really the only time I can get some work done um, while my wife and kids are still sleeping and I don't have to go to work today. So <clears throat> today I'm going to try to get uh, the last major pro uh, part of this project started today and that is pulling the rear end out of the car. Um, there's nothing wrong with the rear end, uh, but my reason for doing that is that uh, for whatever reason, when this car was, was built by previous owner or owners, um, they put a cage in it. That's great. They made the front end, you know, tube chassis type front end, um, got rid of all of that extra sheet metal and whatnot that wasn't there. It was just dead weight. Um, so essentially inside the car and the front half of the car are race car type of setup um but they didn't bother to do any type of reinforcement uh to the torque boxes which if you're even remotely familiar with these fox bodies you'll know that, no idea what that was uh you, you'll know that the uh the torque boxes are, are notorious for being very weak they rip out very easily uh so they need to be beefed up and why that was never done on this car is beyond me. So what I need to do now is basically sand the paint off of every single one of those seams uh, that make up the, the torque boxes. And then I have to run a, a bead of weld around all of it. And then while I'm down there, I'm also gonna install a, a battle box kit to strengthen just that much more, which is gonna be this guy right here. All these plates, a ton of hardware. All that is gonna get installed and welded up. So I have a ton of welding to do, which sucks because I just realized yesterday I have no welding wire, so I'm gonna to have to run out and get some. Um, but the point is, it's much easier to remove the, uh, the rear axle completely since none of the suspension bolts are torqued down. They're just kind of put in there so I could roll the car around. Uh, and also the brake lines are not connected, so it's not like I'm gonna to have to I'm adding any extra work for myself uh, by opening the brake lines since I'm going to have to bleed them anyways, um, whether I pull the axle or not. So it's much easier just to pull it out, get it out of the way. That way I can crawl in and out of the car um, much easier, have better access to uh, everything I need to weld. And uh, it's just, it's only a couple of bolts to get that rear end out. So it's much easier just to do it that way, much more efficient. <clears throat> a couple extra minutes worth of, of work at the beginning will probably end up saving me an hour or two worth of fighting all the suspension components in my way. Um, so I'm gonna do that. And um, once that goes back in, I can bleed the brakes, torque down the suspension, and then really top off the fluids and go for a drive. So that's why I say this is the last major uh, part of, the, of this build. The other thing I need to do is make some adjustments to the front end. Um, the support that's right back here that's supposed to give it shape sticks out too far so you can see it's kind of pushing the body out a little bit it's right here is sticking out a little bit further too uh, and and it's not so much cosmetic is that it makes it very difficult to get the body to line up so I'm gonna make some adjustments on that but like I said that's not a major project I can drive down the road without the uh, the nose on the car um, that's not a necessity. Legally it is, uh, cause I would need headlights, but, uh, as far as what's physically possible, I don't need that on there to get down the road. So anyways, last, uh, major project or part of this project, uh, is going to get started now. So let's do that. All right, lower arms are unbolted. Now I just need to find some sockets for the upper ones. The uh, the upper socket or uh, sorry, upper socket upper bolts are larger. Um, they've been drilled out already. Um, when I picked up the car, and they'd put my rear end for me, uh, I used bigger bolts on my uh, on my upper control arms uh, because they're more prone to rip out. So the bigger bolt helps distribute that load. So. Um, they're already drilled out and I need a bigger 
some bigger sockets. Um, but once I get those couple of bolts out, then I can lower the rear end. I have a couple of these cheapy little Harbor Freight dollies. So I'm gonna just basically slide it in there and be able to roll the whole thing out. out so let's see here if I can show you exactly what I'm talking about but things like this this seam right here um, that's not that's not one of the major ones one of the more important ones is gonna be all of this all of these seams right here you can see they're all just spot welded into place super flimsy and when that rear end um, starts to twist you know for every action there's an equal but opposite reaction so as the axle shaft spins forward the housing spins backwards and as a result it yanks on the upper ones uh, which is why I run a bigger bolt the larger bolt helps distribute that load as I said uh, but it's still pulling equally as hard on this entire housing. So all of this stuff in here has got to get welded up. This right here is real weak, right along here. So once that's welded up, uh, and this is a, this is gonna be a mess. I'm gonna have to find a wire wheel. I'm sure, it's, sure this is gonna take a while, but uh, like stuff up here, this spot right here. But anyways, um, I'm not gonna film that because I'm just gonna be sitting down here with gunk raining down on me for probably a half hour so that's not gonna be fun to watch so I'm gonna start working on that and then I'll pick up the camera again when I'm done okay a little bit of time has passed um, I didn't start doing the uh, the paint cleanup underneath there uh, I decided to test fit the uh, the battle box kit and um, <clears throat> the driver's side didn't want to line up just right so as a result I got in the process of making it line up right and didn't bother to pull out the camera since I was just trying to get it done. So the driver's side is done for the lower control arm. So let me show what that looks like. This is the plate from the inside of the car, obviously. And then on the underside, it's gonna look like this where the control arm bolt goes through this plate and then the plate is attached with these bolts through the floor to the plate inside. What's going to happen is I'll end up welding this plate everywhere I can get my hands on. So probably just right along here. That'll get welded to the actual uh, frame of the car. And then uh, I'll weld the plate inside the car as well. And that'll just help strengthen up the lowers. And then of course, you know, all along here, like that's terrible. That needs to be fixed. And then the seams along here, stuff like that. So. That's what it's gonna look like on the other side. Um, I already have the uh, plate, um, uh, this plate that you see here on the bottom side of the car, it's already in on that side. Now I have to drill some holes. Uh, I had to get creative with a step bit because I don't have any actual 3 8 inch drill bits. Um, I don't know if I mentioned earlier in this video, but my garage is a mess as you should be able to plainly see. I'm sure you've seen in my other videos, uh, but as a result of being a mess, I can never find anything. So um, I was going to run out and buy some bits because I really only need two, a half inch and a three eighths to install this kit. And um, if I can drill just a few more holes with this step bit, then I won't need to buy the three eighths, save a couple dollars there. When I go to the hardware store, I'll just buy the half inch. With that one, I won't be able to do it with the step bit because it needs to be long. Um, to go through the lower part of the floor and then up through the upper part of the floor for the upper torque boxes. So um, I'm gonna see if I can get the other side uh, drilled. And if I can, great, save a couple dollars. If not, I'll run to the store and get two drill bits instead of just one. So I'm gonna jump on that and I'll come back to you when that's done. All right, so second side is now done. It's gonna look just like that. Of course, I'll have to weld that plate down as well, just like on the other side. 
uh, but I don't have any welding wire. I have to go to the store and then um, I need drill bits to install the upper torque boxes. So at this point I'm taking a break. Uh, I've made a pretty decent sized mess in the garage. So this seems like a good place to uh, take a little break. Um, I'll pick back up on it later after I've gotten uh, some, some more tools and a little bit more work done and then uh, we'll go from there. So a couple days have passed since uh, the last video clip uh, was, was taken. Um, I've made some progress and simultaneously had some, uh, some big setbacks. Um, <clears throat> the biggest setback is that when I went to install the upper torque boxes, I realized that when I had purchased them, the company I bought them from sent me the wrong bracket. Um, this is the upper bracket for the passenger side. I got two of these. Uh, obviously I need one for the passenger side and then one that is a mirror image of this for the driver's side. So this is worthless. Uh, I messaged the, uh, the place I bought it from. They apologized for the mistake and said they'd send me a new bracket. But when that's going to come, I don't know. Uh, my goal was uh, to start this project on a Wednesday, which I did, and then to finish it. And by finish, I mean have the, uh, the axle, which is just sitting right here, back under the car on Friday. Well, today's Friday, and it's not going to be under there. Uh, unfortunately, I have to go back to work tomorrow, so it's not getting done on my weekend. Um, but in that meantime, I was able to make some progress. So let me show you. Uh, the anti-roll bar is tacked into place. That's what I'm going to do today is actually weld that. Um, just a couple of booger welds holding it up. Um, but it, it moves nice and smooth, so that's good. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the torque boxes have been welded, so at least they're not going anywhere. Um, over on this side, the, uh, the, the battle box kit is installed because I did have, like I said, I had the passenger side. That's all good to go. So that's in. I don't really have to do anything. I mean, I probably could throw some weld right along there. Um, to strengthen it up even more, but this should be more than enough to hold it. So I'm not worried about it uh, To go in anywhere um, So the goal for today at this point is just to hit a little bit of weld here and here and Same on the other side to get the uh, anti-roll bar in place um, I did do some work on the rear end Let's See if I can show you that For whatever reason the uh, the uh, the car sat too high in the back even though this is the exact same suspension setup that was on the last car I don't know if this is just a random mistake or if the 91s and the 92s were that uh, different um, but the car sits about an inch taller in the back uh, on this 91 than all of the same components did on my 92 so uh, as a result I made these drop brackets here, the, the coilovers I have mount in the stock shock location. Um, so basically this bracket dropped the mounting point an inch and a half, and obviously I made one on the other side. Um, it, the, the bracket is welded as well as bolted, so it'll have no problem holding the weight of the vehicle. Um, that's, like I said, that was an inch and a half drop. So because the car is only about an inch taller, I'll just uh, adjust the coilovers back up about a half an inch. And that should put me right back at the same ride height as the last car. Um, so I got that taken care of. I did, oops, I forgot to show you. Um, the other thing that was slightly different is where uh, the brakes connected. Uh, on, the, on the 92, it was more in the center, and then where it connected to the car was directly on top of the uh, the differential. Whereas on this car, I don't know if that's stock or if that's how someone ran the lines, but uh, where the brake line hooks up is uh, off to the passenger side of the tunnel and much lower. Um, so I basically was able to straighten out the factory line. I know it doesn't look pretty uh, to move the, uh, the 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 T fitting more towards the to the passenger side and then I picked up this brake line at O'Reilly's for about three bucks and then this is the brake line 
the flexible line that came with the car. That will connect to the hard line that's under there. Uh, so I should be all good to go there. So now it's just a matter of waiting for that bracket to come in so I can finish up um, the, that last torque box. And then from there, I can just slide the axle back under the car, bolt it in, hook up the brake line, bleed the brakes, and hook up the drive shaft. And that's going to be the end of the, uh, the major projects. The other thing I am working on, as I think I mentioned a couple days ago, is the ice box, which is mounted. It's in there nice and solid. Uh, I don't have the pump mounted. It's just kind of sitting there. I'm probably going to end up putting it right there. Um, but I'm, I'm waiting for the, uh, the proper water lines. They're on, they're on order. Uh, they should be coming here real soon. So I'm going to get some welding done, make a little bit of progress, and uh, see if we can slowly inch our way towards completing this project. There goes the circuit breaker. Unfortunately, the circuit breaker trips very easily in this garage. It's got a lot of stuff plugged into it, and there's only one, one circuit, apparently, in the entire garage. So I was doing that a lot. This is probably like the 10th the time that thing has tripped uh, in the last couple days. So let me go reset it. Okay, so the anti-roll bar is completely welded in. It moves up and down freely, so that's all good. I slid the axle back uh, under the car uh, simply because it was taking up too much room on my side of the garage where I work. Uh, so I just stuck it under the car to get it out of the way, and my wife can still back her car in and out of the driveway, or in, in and out of the garage without any issues. Um, I was able to hook up the brake line with the axle under the car so now at least I can bleed the brakes so that whenever I do get this part of the project done uh, I can actually take for a drive because this is now the last possible thing that I need to do. Um, the uh, I, I don't know when the part's going to come in. I'm going to have to email the company I bought it from to find out when I'm going to get that last bracket but with the axle just sitting down here on these uh, these dollies and not actually being bolted up in place you can still easily install that, that last remaining part. So that's how I'm gonna leave it like this uh, for now. And I guess I'll just end the video here since there's no, no time frame on when uh, I will get that part. So therefore I have no idea when this is gonna get done. Hopefully I'll have it by next week. Um, I'm gonna email them today and ask them where my tracking number is because they said they'd send me a tracking number as soon as they shipped it and I have no tracking number. So, this is where we're at for now. Very, very close to getting to drive it. Once the rear ends up there, bleed the brakes, top off the, the fluids, go for a drive. That's it. So uh, very, very close. Looking forward to it. Um, then I just have some work up front, get the body to line up just right so at least it looks decent. I know I need to get some hood pins. Uh, I, don't, I didn't get any hood pins with this car, even though it takes four hood, hood pins to hold the hood down. I didn't get any. Um, but those are cheap. I can get them locally or I can go just order them online. I think four of them is like eight bucks or something like that. Seven dollars. It's not that big of a deal to just order them. So that's going to be it. I hope you guys got something out of this video. I know it wasn't super exciting. It was mostly just me going over what I've done. I didn't really record a whole lot of work, but, um, it is what it is. I'll try to get more footage of me working on the next video. So hope you liked it and I'll see you for the next one.